Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and this is my TBR for End of the World Week. This is a week-long read This is a week-long readathon running from the 30th of March till the 5th of April. And it is all about 20th century dystopian and post-apocalyptic fiction. Uh, I am hosting this for the first time, and yes, I realized the timing of this dystopian readathon is slightly unfortunate since we're in the middle of a worldwide pandemic but I can promise you I had this plan for a very long time and I'm not gonna let a stupid virus ruin my dystopian reading fun so if you are joining in then uh, please show me your TBRs let me know what you're reading use the hashtag end of the world week on social media so I can find it but this is all about what I'm going to be reading Again, the parameters are dystopian, apocalyptic or post-apocalyptic fiction that was published or written between 1900 and 1999. Now, I have two books that I'm actually planning to finish during this week, uh, books that I have been reading for a while, but I haven't quite finished yet. And the first one I have been reading for so long. I, I can't remember when I actually started this, but it's certainly been a few months. I'm about just over halfway through is a very short book and this is A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. This is from 1962. I'm sure you'll have at least heard of this one and it is a dystopian novel that's set in a world where well everything is grey, everything is bleak and the main character is a teenage boy named Alex who wreaks havoc with his friends going around murdering, beating up, raping their way through this dystopian future. Now, the reason why I've been reading this for ages is because this is incredibly difficult to read. The language that's used in the book is kind of a made-up dialect, I suppose, of English that uses a lot of uh, new words, a lot of them taken from Russian. So it's it's very difficult to understand the book and you have to really focus on it. It's written from uh, Alex's perspective in first person and it's just, it's a very dense book. First of all, it's very heavy because of the subject matter. The violence is, it's very powerfully written. It's not graphic as such because of this strange new language that's used, but it certainly is powerful and you can't you can't read this one in one go but also it is difficult to understand you really have to focus on the words you really have to try and absorb the meaning of the sentences so this one is my first priority for end of the world week i am going to finish this first before i read any other book that week the second novel i want to finish is i'm not entirely sure whether you can call this one a dystopia or not but it certainly evokes that sort of an atmosphere and it is Der Prozess by Franz Kafka in English The Trial. This novel is uh, was published in 1925 although I believe it was written much earlier. Um, I also think if I remember correctly this is an unfinished novel. The reason why I struggled to call this one a dystopia is because the world of the book hasn't exactly changed uh, in, in a very obvious way. The main character, a man named Josef K, so letter K, uh, is just wakes up one morning and finds himself arrested. He doesn't know what for, he doesn't know why, and he doesn't know who exactly is arresting him. And throughout the novel, he goes through this trial, through this judiciary process without exactly knowing what's going on. This is a weird read. I can't say I'm enjoying it too much to be honest, but this is one of those books that I was supposed to read in school but didn't because I was a brat and now I feel the need to catch up on it. I'm listening to this one on audiobook which makes it a bit easier to kind of put yourself in the mindset of this man and to understand what the hell is going on because it's a very confusing book. So uh, I am also about halfway through this one and again I'm going to finish this before I start any of the new books that I haven't read yet. 
So let's get into those then. Um, I've picked up four, I know this is ambitious, I've picked up four dystopian and post-apocalyptic novels that I am hoping I can make it through. I'm under no illusion that I actually will, but it's nice to have a choice. So the most intriguing out of those four novels is a novel called Swastika Night by Catherine Burdekin. And this, as the title might hint at, is a dystopian novel that has the premise, what if Hitler won the Second World War? Except this book was published in 1937. That's before the war. That's before there was concrete talk of a war. So the author, Catherine Burdekin, has just taken this regime that was going on in Germany at the time. She was a British author and extrapolated that and thought about what would happen in a future world if Hitler, well, first of all, wages war and then wins the war. I don't know anything else about this novel so far. I know that it's set in the far future, so it's not set in the 20th century, it's set a few centuries later. Um, and it seems to me like this is one of those underrated uh, novels of the 20th century. I'm really, I'm expecting a lot from this just because the premise is so interesting. The, the whole what if Hitler won the war kind of setup is definitely not new, it's not original, but it sure was when she wrote it. So I'm very interested to read about this novel that essentially started a whole genre of dystopian fiction. There's also one other kind of groundbreaking dystopia that I am hoping to read this end of the world week, and it is the novel We by Yevgeny Zamyatin, and I probably mispronounced that. This is uh, the novel that apparently George Orwell's 1984 was very heavily inspired by. This was published in 1924. Very interestingly, even though the novel was originally written in Russian, the first publication was in an English translation by Gregory Zilborg. So this, uh, I, I don't know much about this novel at all. I don't know who the main character is. I don't know what kind of a dystopian world this this is portrays. I try not to spoil myself too much when I pick out my books, which kind of makes these TBR videos slightly pointless. But um, I all I know about this is that it is another very underrated dystopian novel of the 20th century, and that it is very similar to George Orwell's 1984, which I obviously really love as well. Now, I didn't want to just read a dystopian fiction for End of the World Week, so I picked out one apocalyptic or post-apocalyptic novel. I don't know whether it is kind of pre-apocalyptic or apocalyptic or post-apocalyptic, but this one definitely deals with the end of the world in some sense. And it is The Kraken Wakes by John Wyndham. This one is from 1953. I really loved The Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham, a similar kind of apocalyptic novel. And, well, I mean, based on the title, I'm expecting some sort of sea creature to rise and, and maybe uh, swallow humanity whole. Again, I haven't done my research when it comes to this novel because I like being surprised by the plots of books that I read. But um, if it's anything like The Day of the Triffids and I'm expecting a lot of adventure, a good uh, sense of humour and uh, a very fast-paced and easy-to-read apocalyptic story just to break up the dark and very heady kind of dystopian worlds that I'm reading about throughout the rest of the week. And finally, and uh, th this novel is the one that I'm likely not getting to if I don't finish the other ones first. Uh, this is from the 1990s, published in 1991. Uh, it's a novel by Marge Piercy. In the US version, so the original edition, it's called He, She and It, but outside of the USA it was published as Body of Glass. And in fact, the edition that I ordered, uh, I ordered a second-hand uh, copy of it, which hopefully is going to arrive sometime before the readathon starts. Um, that one's called Body of Glass as well, because I believe it's a UK print edition. This one 
intrigued me because in a lot of papers I've been reading recently about 20th century dystopian fiction, this one is commented on a lot as a good example of feminist dystopian fiction. And I've read a few pieces of feminist dystopian fiction before, most notably Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale. I'm somewhat familiar with the genre, but not too familiar. And it seems like I really should read another one of those seminal works of feminist dystopian fiction that is uh, he, she and it. And again, I don't know much about this novel. Uh, all I know is the uh, basically the Wikipedia summary in the first line, which says it is set in a post-apocalyptic America and deals with the romance between a human woman and a cyborg. So it sounds quite interesting. I have no opinion on cyborg human romance, but we'll see what that's like. So this is my TBR for end of the world week. If you are taking part, I'd be really interested again to see what you're reading. Post your TBR in the comments, uh, post it on social media and tag it with end of the world week so I can see it and have a look at what 20th century dystopian and post-apocalyptic post -apocalyptic fiction you'll be reading. If you're interested in more videos about um, dystopian fiction and specifically about end of the world week then check out the playlist in the description box that will take you to all of the other videos that I'm doing about this. Thank you for watching. Bye!